Hi everybody, welcome back for another art video. Here we are today. I've been using that little MOFT uh, MOFT uh, tripod that connects to the stand. And so I, I do use it a little bit in this video. So um, you'll be looking quite close. Um, but towards the end of the video, I go back to my regular um, tripod that I, that, you know, gives a good overview of my table. <laughs> um, a couple of the videos from this collection of videos of working on this art piece, uh, I was at the laundromat. So the little, little tripod really does come in handy. What I decided to draw this time was a, just a little forest scene with some mushrooms and a couple of leaves and some sort of like vague looking trees and sky in the background. And I wasn't sure if I wanted to get a fine liner out or a ballpoint pen or um, like a fountain pen to outline um, the mushrooms and stuff. So I decided to get a fine liner out. And um, so that's kind of what you'll be seeing here is uh, me with my fine liners. These are the Ohuhu fine liners. I think I've got a 05, a 005, and there might be like a 03, and I I use the 05 and the 005, I think. I had a brown micron out, but I, I ended up not using that. So, yeah. So, enjoy some... me tracing some of my lines for my mushrooms and leaves. Okay.
we have all of the outlining done. And so you can see we've changed the venues. I'm at the laundromat and I have a little palette of paint that I haven't used in a long time. These are the Zen Arts watercolors. This is kind of like my favorite colors from three of the four sets. They have four sets that have um, 12, you know, 12 little half pans in each. And um, I kind of just picked my favorite that kind of make out a little set. And I forget how many I had there. Quite a bit. <laughs> um, and so I, I took uh, a little sort of like a pastel blue and I mixed it with a little bit of ultramarine um, and I wanted to put a little bit of blue in the sky and that was the first thing I wanted to do. Now this is not watercolor paper so everything I am doing here uh, if it was on real watercolor paper I think it would have handled it better. Um, this is just sketchbook paper and I really love playing with this paper because um, I'm not afraid to just experiment with with things and um, I grabbed a little bit of a green uh, kind of like a hooker's deep sort of a green. These are the Zen Arts watercolors which are the same thing as the Windsor Cotman. There they are. I think there's like three rows of seven. So what is that, 21, 21 watercolors there. Um, they're the same thing as the um, Windsor Newton Cotman paints and also the same thing as the Phoenix watercolors. And um, I bought that new set of Phoenix so oh, a few months ago and I haven't really used them much. So I decided instead of having to lug that huge 48 set of Phoenix around, I thought I'd grab this little I think it, it's a really only supposed to hold 12, but I was able to cram in 21 <laughs> little half pans. Um, and so here I've put a little bit of green, and this kind of give like, you know, uh, like a mention or an idea of trees and foliage and stuff like that in the background. And um, so I'm gonna color various shades of green as much as I can. I'm probably going to, go back and forth between my palette, um, where you can sometimes see what I'm grabbing, what I'm not grabbing, um, and I'm just gonna go all the way around the mushroom so that way I can, you know, get the entire background covered with some sort of a color.
can see I'm just adding lots of different shades of green, some olive green, some hooker's green, some leaf green. I'm mixing different greens with <clears throat> yellow ochre and different colors. And I'm just, you know, putting it on the page just to, you know, fill in all of that space in between objects. <clears throat> I know there's probably easier ways to do it or better ways to do it, but, you know, we're just playing in a sketchbook. It's, you know, it's not watercolor paper, so it doesn't flow the way watercolor normally would, but it, it looks, you know, it's just filling in that space because it would look odd to see these beautifully detailed mushrooms and then all of this white space. So here you can see I'm going in for this orangish red color here. Um, it's actually a color that's called vermilion hue. Um, some places might call it like a cadmium medium orange, but you can see I added a little bit of like a magenta and a little bit of a burnt sienna. Then I'm adding a little bit more of that just to kind of give it a little bit more depth. And this is just the first layer that's going down. It's going to be light. At first, I started worrying about the little white, you know, the little white parts of the mushroom. I'm like, oh, forget it. I'll use a gel pen or a Posca paint pen. And so you can see it's a beautiful color. It's, um, you know, like a deep, almost kind of like a blood red, you know, but with the hint of that burnt sienna brown, just, you know, a really pretty, pretty hue to it. Um, it kind of reminds me of like an Italian red that you would get in the, um, in the 36 set by White Knights. And um, it's a really pretty red. And so that's what I'm doing. So I'm going to spend some time with this color on the mushrooms. Thank you. 
I decided to go into like the stems of the mushrooms and I realized something that this palette doesn't have is it doesn't have like a Payne's gray. Um, Cause I really would have liked to have had those stems be sort of like a off whitish gray. Um, and so I, I watered it down a brown that, that I had in the set. I'm, I'm not sure exactly what color brown. It's not quite Van Dyke. Um, so I watered that down as much as I could with having such a uh, mixing palette that had so much colors all already on it. I guess I could have cleaned that off, but I chose to just leave it as is. And and I, I didn't put that much... Oop, a little bit of brown went down there. Actually, a lot of brown. Um, but just trying to keep it, you know, thin and transparent. I think next time I would wanted to use, you know, like a, a watered down Payne's Gray or taking a Payne's Gray and mixing it with like a Chinese white or a titanium buff and creating sort of a, a cool gray because that's really the color that I wanted for the the base or the stalk of the mushrooms. And also that would have then meant that this brown that I'd used for the underside of the mushroom would look, have more contrast. But you know, that's okay. Um, it's just a sketchbook. It's just, I was bored at the laundromat and wanted to do some painting and I had some stuff in my bag and that's what, what we did. So. I'm mixing up some colors right now to go in on the tops of the mushrooms to give them a little bit more, a little bit more color, some darker in some areas, some lighter in some areas, and, and so you can see that's really a, a vibrant color that really is quite nice. And notice how I put the majority of the color at the bottom to kind of elude to shadow <laughs> and so like more like sun's hitting the top uh, but I mean there's there's no real perspective in this little sketch at all um, so here's some more painting the mushrooms So I had to let that dry a little bit. And so here you can see me mixing. I think I'm taking the um, olive green or the sap green. I can't remember which green. And I'm putting some on the little palette, adding a little water, kind of dabbing some off. Because I want to pick up uh, that. I picked up like a yellow ochre, yellow oxide sort of a color. I think that one's called yellow ochre or yellow yellow oxide. And to add to that sappy olive green to kind of give it just a little bit more depth. Um, and I thought that might be a good color to put on the leaves. It was kind of funny, Chad was there with me and he said, when I first started putting down this color, he looked at it and went, I don't know. It's too similar. It's too similar. And then after it dried and everything, he went, oh, okay. That's a good color for that. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> Chad wasn't uh, sure that that was a good color for the leaf until it dried. Um, and then I had to remind him. I said, watercolors dry, you know, differently than they go down. 
uh, kind of like, you know, how alcohol markers, you know, can sometimes change a little bit too. So here I am, almost finished with this portion of the painting. And then eventually what we'll do is we end up folding laundry and uh, I let it dry and I take it home and I finish it at home, which the next couple of shots you'll see. back at home and I pull out my Lockby tool roll and I want to get some pencils out. I have in here a 12 set of the um, Derwent drawing pencils which are kind of like a thicker, creamier, sort of a woodsy sort of a set of colored pencils. And then I also have a set of Prismacolor premieres that are the same thing. They're like an outdoorsy sort of a urban sketching, but like not urban sketching, like um, plain air painting. There you go. That sort of a color scheme. And I just wanted to add a little bit of a uh, little bit of detail. And I even find my um, white gel pen which I had in my tool rule which really helps quite a bit and I'm just adding some detail filling in some color some places where it you know was needed so nothing really too much to explain there what the gel pen does wonderfully those you know red capped mushrooms that have all those little white dots this is just a uh, jelly roll um, I know a lot of people like the uniball signo but for me this is a jelly roll 10 I think and so it's like a quite a bold um, like ball for the gel pen or the the roller ball and it like just the for me, the white ink flows so well. And this is, I think I got this in like a six pack or an eight pack on Amazon. And I've had them for a couple of years and they're just still trucking along. They're still, you know, working just well. As you can see for me, they're quite, quite good. Um, better sometimes than a Posca pen because you know, sometimes you can't really control this fine of a detail, even with one of the fine detailed, 
you know, white Poscas, which I have. But see how the colored pencil just added a little bit of shadow, a little bit of shade underneath the the mushrooms. Not, you know, not crazy going for a lot, but this gel pen is perfect. So I'm going to keep doing this for a while. Now I'm going in with this sort of sage-ish green, just trying to sort of blend a little bit of the greens together and to kind of get in as close to the leaves and the mushrooms just to, you know, kind of make the background look like it's more seamless and just, you know, kind of, you know, smooth and together. And that, that green really does a great job with that. going around, checking different little spots. It's so simple what you can do when using watercolors and colored pencils. They just, they work so well together. I would of course always put watercolor down first and then colored pencil down because if you're using like a waxy pencil, uh, a lot of times the uh, watercolor will not penetrate through the pencil to get to the paper and so you're creating like a kind of like a resist um which you know that might be nice if that's what you're going for um so but i would always put watercolor first and then go over with your pens and pencils because you'll get better layering to create more depth chocolate brown pencil since I had used, you know, that sort of like watered down Van Dyke brown in order to create the stem of the mushrooms just to kind of give it a little bit more outline. Yes, I know I outlined these in a um, alcohol marker, but because, you know, watercolor went over them and other colored pencils went over them, some of that like detail or that crisp line that you see is lost. And so I thought, you know, going over some of these areas with colored pencils would add a little bit more depth so it wouldn't be so stark black line, white line. And then I pulled out one of the um, Derwent drawing pencils just to kind of add a little bit of definition to the, to the leaves. Um, I'm not sure exactly which green this is. There's some really nice earthy greens in the Derwent drawing pencils, especially if you get like the full, what is it, 24 set. I, I do have the 12 and the 24 set, but the 12 is what I usually travel with. So here we are, we're done. This is what um, I've been working on the past few days. Some 
mushrooms in a forest. Enjoy! <laughs>